Hello and welcome to a new exciting tutorial here on Industrial Digital Alchemy. I wish everybody of you a happy new year. I know the last year was for a lot of people very hard, very bad year with all the corona going on. And I really hope you had some time over the Christmas time to relax and enjoy and get some new ideas and directions for your new year that is now 2021. So today I want to introduce some cool feature here with Quixel. So what is actually Quixel? Quixel is an asset library that offers scans of landscapes, plants, surfaces, buildings, and has a lot of great things you can use for your production. It's based on a monthly subscription and the models are very high detailed they ship with textures and are very great to use. So in my case now, I'm using Houdini and I want to show you how the pipeline between the Quixel, Megascans and Houdini is working. So first of all, make sure that you download the Quixel bridge. The Quixel bridge is where all the magic is happening where you get all the assets from the Quixel store. And when you download it and install the Quixel bridge, make sure you go to edit, manage plugins. And in the manage plugins menu, you see that we here have different pipelines for example, the Unreal Engine, 3D Studio Max, Maya, Unity, Blender, Houdini, and so on. So when you open up Houdini, it will create after the installation some mega scans menu here in the shelf tool. And click on the mega scans plugin. And you can see that we have here import options. In our case, we will use Redshift. We also can use Renderman or Mantra or even Arnold if that would be installed. We can choose the material type and we can pretty much use the Megascan scans, enable the level of details. The level of details are the different steps of the scan, how detailed the scan is and how well it's uh, modified with ZBrush or whatever they use. And we can convert the textures to red for Mantra or Karma. So when you are on the Quixel bridge, you go to your assets it de it's depending how many points you have gained over the subscription. And for example, you go to your purchased assets. And in, uh, in my case, I want to use this Icelandic rock assemble eruption here. That is looking very nice, detailed, very cool look. And you go then to the edit and export settings. And in the export settings, you create a connection between this Megascan plugin here and your software of choice, the export target. So the target is Houdini. As I mentioned, I downloaded the plugin here already for Houdini, which is at the moment version 4.4. So we want to use Houdini, we want to use EXR, and here we want to use all those maps like Albedo, which is 
mostly the diffuse map we want displacement metalness normal the roughness the specular you also can add maps here for your own purpose and we can specify the level of detail we can also download the high poly source but this is actually overkill because um, all the assets are quite uh, data consuming we want to use level of detail 0 2 4 and so on and you can specify file names whatever you need for your pipeline so once this is all set up you go here on this little export blue uh, arrow window hit export and you can see how it's exporting to houdini and back to houdini we can see and you can see that the model got imported here inside of our houdini awesomeness what can also be set up is um, actually that is here you can use some scattering which scatters the geometry in houdini and create the scatter setup node for us um, in the scatter setup we have some for loops here that compile the source object that we just imported with level of detail zero and we have here the quixel simple scattering node where we can make adjustments like you know it from the scatter node inside of Houdini. So you can um, specify the, the total points, how many you want to scatter and so on. And what's also very cool, it's creating also the material for us with a redshift material builder. And you can see here that everything is cleanly set up from the material, displacement, bump map, roughness, albedo, like we just specified here in the export settings of our Quixel bridge. Those are the maps here. So what's also um, interesting when you choose here EXR for example and you download it JPEGs, the export will not work. You also have to make sure that the Quixel Bridge and Houdini or Maya whatever you use is finding the right textures to make sure that those textures map later with the model. So I also got some um, ice wall here and I want to make some renderings to show you how this is looking. It's a very cool pipeline because everything can be then used in Houdini to build up your scene for whatever you need you can put in the explosions the flip fluid your characters it's very nice it's very cool and what i do now is adding a light so hit tab rs light dome and you can see we have here created a redshift light hit this high quality lighting button and you see that the scene is very bright under the light tab we pretty much higher the exposure and also add a dome map uh, which is mostly in HDR And as you can see, the HDR got loaded in. It's a very big scene here. 
and it's taking all the light information that comes from the exposure and from the illumination into the account for the illumination of your scene which can make everything a bit more realistic so i also added this camera here now go to the out hit tab rs redshift custom in the redshift custom we want to go to redshift to the global illumination we want to use brute force as our gi engine for everybody who does not know what gi is gi is a method of global illumination which simulates and and calculates the bounds of light when it travels through matter and through the through the different objects and it's it can make a scene quite more realistic but you also have to take into account that global animation is very time consuming so make sure that you use it wisely do some tests and um, don't uh, exaggerate your gi settings so i open the render view now here we have the redshift render view, we choose our camera and hit this render button here. So the Quixel assets also get very interesting when used uh, in the Unreal Engine. When you have real time creation of your scene, this will be covered in another tutorial. But you can see those models are very, very nice, very clean, very realistic, and it's a lot of fun to use them on the run, on the go, for your production. And it's a very great must-have for visual effects because it's really nice. It's it's so 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 nice to see all those great models here. So definitely something you should ch check out for the new, new year. So you can see that the scene is now rendered. It's quite dark, quite uh, not so nice. So let's adjust the light a bit. Let's set it here to three. So here's some example rendered of some other scene I used. We also have some plants inside here and the mountains and when you now want to add some some new element like for example let's say we take the purchased ones and we take this nice rock formation go to the export make sure everything is connected you can go in the scatter setup adjust the global force global count 